最近とかもそうだけどね、途中は30分くらいから。Welcome, everyone. While we're waiting for everyone to join us, I just wanted to say thank you for being here on such a warm day in New Jersey.、Um, if you're coming to us from Japan or elsewhere, please let us know in the chat. We'd be happy to see where you're coming to us from. We'll get started in just a moment. All right, so welcome everyone to the Newark Museum of Arts Museum Crawl with the Mori Art Museum, which is located in Tokyo, Japan. Tonight, we will get a special tour of Another Energy Power to Continue Challenging 16 Women Artists from Around the World. This exhibition focuses on 16 female artists who are in their 70s or older from across the globe who continue to embark on new challenges. Artists range in age from 71 to 105 and have careers spanning over 50 years.、Um, they are originally from 14 different countries and are equally diverse in their current locations. If you're watching on Zoom, please go ahead and drop questions and comments in the QA feature. Or if you're coming to us live from Facebook, please write your questions in the comment box below. We'll be looking at your questions and trying to answer them throughout the program tonight. We are delighted to have with us tonight Tokuyama Hirokazu, who is the associate curator at the Mori Art Museum, to lead us on this wonderful tour. So it is my pleasure to now hand it over to you, Toku. Toku. Thank you so much. Hi,、uh, good evening, everybody.、Uh, thank you, Hana, for a great introduction. I'm Hirokazu Tokuyama, associate curator at the Mori Art Museum. Today,、uh, I'll give you a walkthrough tour of.、Uh, Current show Another Energy.、Uh, Another Energy is uh, uh, the exhibition celebrating、uh, 16 female artists from around the world.、Um, most of the artists started their career in the 50s and 60s. So they have,、uh, they continue uh, challenging uh, for uh, art making for over 50 years. So、uh, maybe, yeah, let's、uh, go inside what's up there. Okay. Oh, before I start, I、uh, want to explain that、uh, at the beginning of each artist section,、uh, we put up the name and also the、uh, artist interview, which we made it for this, especially for this exhibition. And you can hear、uh, the voice from the artist directly、uh, in the interview video. And also, there is a quote.、Uh, From the interview,、uh, we made this because we thought、uh, it is very inspiring just、uh, talking to artists and listening to、uh, their word, and which is uh, uh, all the word from、uh, the artists who had a career more than 50 years. So maybe we uh, we uh, like to share the experience, you know, working with the artists with the audience so that、uh, the audience will come away with something maybe.、Uh, Inspiring art world and also like another energy from each artist.、Uh, the first artist is Philida Barrow from England. M. Her work, she's, she's famous for, she's famous for、uh, making the huge,、uh, powerful、uh, sculpture piece, which occupy,、uh, which always. Occupy the whole exhibition room. And for this exhibition,、uh, she made a new commission for Undercover 2, especially for this exhibition. Yes. And she tried to uh, create uh, the sculpture, which is、uh, on the verge of transforming to another state. Or、uh, very abstract, and it's really uh, uh, it's difficult. Sometimes it's difficult to explain in the words. But、uh, what she intends to make or represent through her artwork is that、uh, she wants to represent something that she can only、uh, express only by art. And if you look at the back side of the sculpture, it's totally different from 
uh, what you see from the frontal side. So it's also important uh, for her, her work to interact with the audience, not only with the, uh, the exhibition site, so that our audience can just walk around the work and uh, uh, experience you know, their own uh, interaction with uh, the sculptural piece, so that maybe stimulate uh, the imagination to create their own understand, interpretation of the work, or maybe come up with a special story. And this piece was uh, the most challenging piece in the entire show because the Filida, uh, Filida Barrow, she doesn't make uh, any blueprint or art, 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 architect, architectural drawing for her work. She always work on site, uh, improvise uh, on site and uh, try uh, with a try and error with uh, different material. But since COVID-19, she couldn't make it come or, or like a, yeah, anyone from her studio. So we have to uh, install this huge piece with uh, connecting, uh, through connecting with the Zoom, like I do now. So we put up like a six or seven iPads around the uh, lexicon room and she uh, installed with a 300 degree uh, angle to the Zoom and it takes about like 10 days. But in the end, we, uh, we are successful to make this, install this uh, huge piece. And she was the artist, the Filida was so happy. And it was a very first experience with her, but maybe we need this kind of improvisation or some uh, new process of installing the piece. Maybe coming a couple years. Okay. And the next artist is Anabera Gallo. The Anabera is from Brazil. And she was born in 1933 in Rio de Janeiro. And how she works in the interdisciplinary the media from print and the photography and the video and it was very uh, challenging that uh, she tried this uh, new media in 1960s and 70s and her subject primal subject is the political situation in brazil and also uh, european colonization the history of Lord european colonization and this is uh, one of the her first series called uh, face Vasco. So she, for this piece, she used, she was interested in, in inner structure of the body and she used the inner structure of the body as a metaphor of the whole universe. So she deal with some, uh, some sometimes like a political situation in the Brazil with using the image of the inner body. This one for uh, the meat on the chopping board. Toku, what is that made out of? Is it is it paint, ink? Oh, it's an ink. Yeah, it's a print. Yes. You see. So I really like this piece because it's between abstract and the figurative the image. that you can expand your imagination in all directions. Yes. And also she often use the image of uh, the map, world map, the map of uh, Latin America. So through this piece, she questioned the idea of the border and also she question about the ownership of the land and the culture. And she used the, the character. And this one is a cultural 
this this work is called uh, cultural current. You can see the one world dependent in the between the continents. And for some of her uh, photography piece, she performed herself too. And this work is for Brazil Nativo, uh, native Brazil and Aryan Brazil. And for this piece, the left side of the postcard on the left side is the, uh, the photograph of Ororo tribe, indigenous people in the Brazil. Wow, and there's so much to take in with her work. We had a question to move a little slower with her pieces because there's just so much to see. Um, okay. If that's possible, thank you. Okay. Wow, that's beautiful, thank you. So the photograph on the right side, it's Annabelle herself, disguised herself as the Bororo tribe. So she uh, acted herself as an invader of uh, the culture and also creation of the ownership of the, and also the culture in the Brazil. And also she works on some video piece. So it's, it's just surprising that uh, she worked on this interdisciplinary uh, the media in the 70s, in the 60s always. Okay, the next, uh, let's move on to the next artist. Next artist is Robin White. She's from New Zealand. She was born uh, in 1946 in New Zealand, and she made her name as a landscape painter in the 70s. But in eight, 1982, she moved to Kiribati Island with her family. And there, it's really difficult for her to find like usual painting material, and she has to find a new media for her work for her art. And then what she found is a tapa paper, tapa fabric. The tapa is a, the fabric made out of paper mulberry tree, and which is very substantial for the, the lives, uh, the living in the uh, Oceania area. Tapa paper is used for like a newborn baby and also uh, on a wall and the ceiling and uh, linen for the bedding. So she used tapa paper and print a pattern on the paper. And also what is important uh, for her to uh, work on the tapa paper as a new media is uh, she had to collaborate with a lot of women uh, to make one type of paper. For this piece, it's called Seeing Along the Avenue. Uh, she worked with uh, 20 or 30 uh, people. So it's kind of an uh, expand idea of like individualism. So one artist make one art. Work is kind of a Western way of thinking, but uh, she always have to work with Many people, and there is not only one artist for who makes this piece. And the quote, her quote from the interview video is very inspiring too. She said, uh, "Individualism is not a big thing in Pacific. You are measured by your ability to get along, get along with others, work as a group." That is really striking. I, could you tell us how long that piece is? It seems like it's very, very long. Yeah, it's very long. It's uh, 24 meter long. And 
they had to work on like more than three months to just make only uh, to, to make this piece. And also this one, another piece by uh, Robin White is a summer grass, it's called Summer Grass. And this is the piece that uh, she works on this. When she moved back from the uh, Kiribati Island to New Zealand, she uh, lived, lived in the place called Masterton. And near her, near her house, she found a place uh, where uh, at the time of World War II, uh, there was a war prisoner camp. And there was a 48 uh, Japanese war prisoner there. Uh, and also there was incident, the conflict between uh, the people, the Japanese people and the New Zealand people. And 48 Japanese soldier was killed in that incident. And when she visited the site, it was kind of, for, uh, she felt like a, a forgotten, forgotten the history was there. So she uh, was urged to make a painting about this incident. And then what she did is she used the, uh, the wallpaper in the, uh, it's really hard to see, but this is the wallpaper. And she used a back of wallpaper that she found in the uh, old house in the master tone. So the wallpaper is something to hide on uh, underneath. So she want to reveal what's forgotten or for, uh, what's forgotten in the history with using the back of the wallpaper, which is very uh, inspiring. So that would be as if it were to be pasted with the image against the wall, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Wow. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next room. The next artist is American artist, Suzanne Lacey. Suzanne is a famous for as a pioneer of social practice. And she started to engage with the feminist movement in 1970s when she uh, was involved in the college. And here we sh showcase uh, three work of Sun Leishi. The one from uh, 1979 is called uh, International Dinner Party. And she made, uh, she organized a dinner to celebrate the premiere of her uh, uh, Judy Chicago, the her teachers, uh, the famous piece, uh, Dinner Party at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. And she tried to organize a dinner party across the globe with uh, feminist uh, activists. So at that time there is no internet. So she used a letter and telegram to communicate with the people around the world. It's a record. Then there's a red arrow. This is the place where the people are to part in for the dinner party one night. So it's very interesting that you can see feminist the activists at that time in Japan, and also Southeast Asia, Middle East. So this could be considered as kind of where the evidence of uh, international network of feminists in 1970s too. And another work, another piece is called uh, Between Door and the Street. This is a, uh, the video record of the her performance that took place in 19, uh, 2013 in New York. So that, with this piece, she broke the one street of the Brooklyn 
and she worked with uh, 365 activists and they're making 60 different groups. And each group uh, talks about, discuss the social issues in front of the, each, uh, in front of the house in the porch. And it's kind of, the audience just walks through the street and, you know, jump in the conversation and, you know, share the idea or share the interest. The in total, in the end, uh, there was uh, 2,000, more than 2,400 uh, people joined. And at the end, uh, they made, each group made a question that they want to ask to the community and they put up in front of the Brooklyn Museum as a part of the installation. So for this exhibition, uh, we put up the, some of the, the creation on the bench and the floor. Um, and you can see the feminism is not only about the gender, it's about race, uh, the poverty, uh, labor, and identity. So Sudan always uh, work with uh, the different people, diverse people from different traditions of the society. I love that there are benches there. Was that not just to watch, but also to feel like you were a part of the conversation that was happening on the street as well? Yeah, that's right. And um, it was very uh, kind of uh, impressed me when I, you know, uh, when I come to the museum on Sunday and looking at, looking at some uh, father and son sitting on this bench, what is a family? So it's uh, kind of uh, work with, interact with the audience very organic way. So, and this one, another piece from 1976, it's called inevitable associations. Okay. It's really so uh, this is performance took place in the Baltimore Hotel in LA. And this one, uh, there's some newspaper article uh, when the Baltimore Hotel uh, was under renovation, she compared the building, the old hotel to the female. So with uh, this performance, in this performance, the Sudan herself, disguised as an old woman with a Hollywood uh, special makeup artist, the, and did actually uh, talk and discuss about, you know, like uh, the aging with uh, old ladies. So with this work, she uh, questioned about sexism and aging. So through this work, you can see, uh, Suzanne places the constant commitment to our social issues and also to the people who are in a different position in the society. And okay, let's move on to the next artist, Ethel Adam. Ethel Adna, uh, she was born in 1952 in Beirut and under French mandate. So she was educated in French. Uh, uh, she was educated in French and then she speak uh, Turkish and Greek in her house. Then also she was taught Arabic by her father. Then this experience through this experience, uh, the language become very important element for her work. 
and she started she studied after she studied the philosophy and the literature she started writing the poetry and novel and she moved to united states in the 60s and started teaching at the in some college and in 60s she uh, feel unnatural and she feel it's not right to uh, write uh, poetry and novel in French, which is the uh, language of uh, the country who are uh, uh, the occupied her own country. So instead of using uh, the language, she started painting as a, the tool to the medium to express her idea. But still, you can see the strong relationship between her painting and also the language. If you look at this uh, Leporello work, it's kind of uh, draw, uh, her drawing in book format. And this work is called Tree. It's so interesting that you mentioned language too. It's, it feels like we're here in person watching these videos and hearing from the artists themselves in each room. So thank you so, so much for, for leading us down every piece. And um, I think we had a question about was getting a zoom in of one of her more graphic pieces on the wall in front of you. Mm -hmm. Could we take a close look at one of those? Yep. Thank you. She paints, uh, the, basically she paints the landscape, the sea and mountain and some clouds and sun, which uh, she looking out from her window in you know, her house in LA and also Lebanon. And instead of just uh, depicting uh, figurative, the image of the landscape, she tried to express her emotion that she felt at the time she looking out, looking at the landscape. And also these smaller paintings. And this is exact uh, the similar in size to uh, the notebooks that she used for writing. So in this, uh, you can see the strong connection between writing and painting too. Okay. Okay, the next artist. Next artist is Lily Dujri. She was born in 1941 in Belgium and still based in there. She's famous for her minimalist expression uh, with uh, using different medium, like from sculpture to video and print. And minimalist expression is what's consistent in those, all of her work. And here you can see, since oh, since our museum is located on 53rd floor of a high-rise building in Tokyo, you can see the landscape of Tokyo. Just. That's such a great view. Thank you for showing us that too, the context of the exhibition. <laughs> Nestled in the city, in the sky. And there is uh, one piece by Lady Dujri called uh, Landscape, just next to the landscape of Tokyo. She's on the wall. Here. And she uh, just used a couple a uh, strip of the magazine, paper strip from the magazine. 
creating the landscape on the wall. So could consider there is some similarity to haiku. The haiku is a Japanese uh, poetry format that uh, with a limited number of words, uh, the, high, uh, the poet tried to create the whole world. So maybe there's some similarity between our work and the haiku too. Okay. Okay. Someone says it reminds them of Morse code or, um, you know, letters encoded in dots. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's right. I think that's a smart, a smart uh, connection. So thank you for writing yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next artist is Kim sung from Korea. She was born in 1946 in Korea and moved to France in 19. And work with uh, she work with video and the poetry and the photography very uh, interdisciplinary uh, the media and also she worked with uh, some art uh, French artist French philosopher like uh, Jean Luc Nancy and also uh, John Cage the artist and Nam Jung Pike and. This exhibition, she uh, represents artwork called uh, Forest Poem, and which is kind of respond to the situation uh, of uh, COVID-19. Since the Mori Museum, the name, the Mori means uh, for forest. So what she tried to create is, uh, she tried to create the forest of poem. So what she did in uh, this work is she collect uh, poetry reading the video from uh, the poets around the world. It's about like a 60 or 70, uh, the video. And actually uh, this, uh, the video uh, was uh, automatically uh, edited uh, by algorithm and responding to the weather in Tokyo at this moment. So you never see uh, the same uh, video or same editing the, the, of the video in the exhibition room. It's really uh, uh, improvised uh, spontaneously to respond to the weather in Tokyo. And next artist is Anna Bogigian. Anna was born in 1946 in Cairo, in Egypt. And she traveled uh, all the time in many places in, in the world and create the art piece based on the history of that place and the place where she showed uh, the artwork. And for this exhibition, she uh, makes new installation uh, based on Japanese silk industry because the silk road is the connecting the world uh, the connect of Japan to the Egypt and she made a connection uh, with Japanese culture back this way and she was interested in uh, silk industry in the modern time in Japan because uh, the silk industry was uh, is uh, it's a, one of the most important uh, the industry support the country's uh, development in a modern time. But also uh, there was so many, uh, a lot of the sacrifice of uh, female or especially the young girls labor. And she was in, interested, uh, interested in both sides of the story. So she made a story of making silk, this is a silk worm. And the girl is making a silk thread. And also mulberry tree. And also she was interested in the fact that uh, the Toyota Sakichi, the one who invented 
uh, automatic uh, weeping machine that saves a lot of labor of uh, young girls. And Toyota Sakishi is the father of uh, Toyota Kichiro, the founder of Toyota Motors. And this is a Toyota Sakichi's uh, Toyota Kama. So she compiled uh, different elements uh, from the history to uh, make her own story. And this is how she try to understand or the world, or this is the process of, of how to understand, interpret the history and the world. Her drawings are very beautiful too. She made uh, this type of small drawings and she enlarged the element and making like this installation. Let's move into next room. In next room, uh, there's three artists showcased, and all the work, all, all the artists has worked on minimalist uh, style. And it's uh, sort of natural to uh, for the artists who start their career in the sixties and seventies to be in, uh, influenced by the minimalism. Then uh, in this room, there is a three artists who have the same, uh, the minimalism style. But uh, if you take a closer look, there is more, it's very uh, different, uh, diverse story in each work. And this artist uh, from Indonesia, the Nunun WS, she works on the abstract. Painting like this. Okay. Like this. Uh, she, she is inspired by a uh, traditional uh, Indonesian textile, like batik and a songket. And she find a uh, spiritual value in each color that is used in a textile. So for her, uh, this spiritual value, so the spirituality and also like emotional, uh, the value is very important for her paintings. Are those separate canvases placed together or is that all one painting? Oh, it's a separate canvas. Like this, there is a gap between. And maybe it's really hard to see on the screen, but uh, all the red using this one painting are different. And each red is coming from, uh, comes from a uh, textile from different region in the Indonesia. And the next to Nunu, uh, the paintings by Carmen Herrera was here. The Carmen, uh, she was born in 1950, uh, 1915 in Cuba. And probably some of you remember her uh, retrospective that happened in uh, 19, uh, 2010 in Whitney. She studied this uh, geometric or geometric abstract painting in 1950s and keep uh, continue until now. Is she one of the older artists in this show? Uh, yes, she's the oldest artist. She just turned uh, 106 year old two weeks ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. And her quote is very impressive. 
she said, I waited for a long time. They were saying, if you wait for the bus, the bus will come. I waited almost a century for the bus to come. <laughs> it came. Very cute. And next to Carmen, uh, there's a uh, Japanese artist, Katsuko Miyamoto. Kazuko was born in 1942 in Tokyo, but she moved to New York in 19, uh, 1966, and she's still uh, based in New York until now. And she worked. She worked with. Uh, she worked as an assistant for Saul Lewitt, Saul Lewitt, uh, in from 60s because she uh, happened to be happened to uh, live in the same building where uh, he had a studio. So she became, she became uh, one of her uh, first assistants. So now you, the, you can see that some similarity uh, in like a geometrical uh, drawing that she made with a sort of little bit minimalist uh, drawing. The style. Then she started making this kind of uh, sculpture piece and uh, which is an uh, instruction art so they can create this uh, sculpture sculpture by following uh, instruction on her drawings like this. for this piece it's called uh, black puppy uh, she used a uh, uh, 1,900 uh, nails connecting with string. It's a repetition of very simple uh, instruction, but then it created this very uh, complicated uh, three-dimensional forms, which is very inspiring. And if you walk around the sculpture, you can see how it changed according to the movement of the audience. So again, this uh, the engagement of the audience is very uh, one of the important elements for her work too. And this is another work title. This is a original drawings, very beautiful. And turn into three dimensional sculpture. It is so interesting that part of her work is a blueprint for the other part of her work. I don't want to rush you, but I think we only have about seven more minutes together. Okay. So okay. just so you know, thank you. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Okay, next artist is Senga Nengudi, uh, African-American artist. Okay. So there's a very interesting connection with, uh, between Senga and Japan. She, uh, in 1966, she uh, studied abroad in Japan and stayed in Tokyo for one year to, uh, make, the uh, to uh, make research about Gutai uh, Art Artist Association, which is a very uh, avant-garde uh, artist group in Japan at that time. Her work is uh, she used her work. She's famous for this uh, abstract uh, sculpture with using uh, very soft uh, material like water and uh, and also panty force. Now she's having a uh, retrospective at the Philadelphia the Museum of Art. So. Wish I could visit there. And she sh for this show, she showed uh, one of the uh, new piece, sound and video installation called uh, Warp Trance. Oh. 
Okay, maybe I should rush. I have a four more artists, so maybe I just can go through it quickly. Sure, that'd be great. At least we can get a, a sense of the space. Yeah. And Miriam Khan, the painter from Switzerland. And we used her, one of her paintings as kind of key visual for the entire show. And it's very interesting that uh, she arranged a painting, the center of the eye level of the figure painted on, uh, in the canvas. It's line up center of the eye line. So it's kind of uh, symbolized kind of transcendental the view of her to the world, that all the things in the universe are equal. And next artist is uh, Beatriz Gonzalez. She's from Colombia. She was born in 1932 in Colombia. And her work is very political. She works uh, engaged with social issues and uh, memory in society. Columbia. And she also in uh, the work on very uh, interdisciplinary uh, media. Like for this one, she is the furniture and she painted her female figure in the position of the mirror, representing her uh, individual emotion that were felt in household. And the next artist is Arpita Singh from India. She's a kind of national artist in India and she was born in 1937 in India. And her work is also political about like deal with political issues. And it's kind of rare for Indian contemporary artists to work on uh, like directly engaged with political issue. She started working with uh, this abstract, this type of abstract drawing, but developed into this figurative uh, painting. And this is a kind of landscape of New Delhi. And she depicted uh, male politicians or on the map and then also like half very female. And the text was very straightforward. It says uh, 56 men, 12 women, were supported upon and punished. So you can take this, the whole painting is kind of criticism criticism on power structure in New Delhi. Okay. And her use of color is very beautiful. It's part, uh, it's partly influenced by her experience working in a traditional textile workshop in India, right after she graduated from the art school. Okay, so the next artist It's uh, Mishima Kimio, Japanese artist. She's the last artist of the show. She was born in 1932 uh, in Osaka in Japan. She studied as the painter. She started making her painting in 1960s uh, uh, with using uh, different material and technique. She used a collage and oil and acrylic. And then also this collage. This is the oil painting, collage. 
and also six screen printing. Then from 1970s, she started working as work with a sculpt, uh, start making sculptures. And this is the sculpture of the newspaper. If you take a closer look, this uh, newspaper made out of the ceramic. So she combined the technique with make the ceramic with the silk screen printing. So she made a print on the ceramic. That's fascinating. Yeah, and the fire. And then she tried to represent the fear that she had uh, in uh, rapid economic growth. Fear about the information and also like uh, the garbage uh, that produced by the capitalist society. But she thought like, uh, you know, in the fu near future, we are, uh, uh, the society will collapse by flooding of uh, information and the garbage. So she tried to uh, buy, uh, convert the newspaper uh, to different material ceramic. She tried to depict, or she tried to depict the potential danger uh, hidden in the information or information society or uh, the garbage that's produced by the uh, capital society. Because the, once the ceramic breaks, it becomes a sharp and it's hurt our skin. So, and the back of this huge pile of the ceramic, uh, the newspaper made out of the ceramic, there is a, also another garbage, the cardboard and the empty can. These are also made out of ceramic. Wow, I would never have guessed that from looking from this far away. <laughs> how, how interesting. It strikes me that all of the artists that you've chosen for this exhibition have such wonderful multi-layered meaning to their mm. works. And so it's such a treat to be able to see them through your eyes as the curator uh, and see the meaning that, that you all kind of put together for this show. Okay. Maybe, uh... My camera was not so good because it was my first time to shooting and talking at the same time, so. No, you did a fantastic but, job. Yeah. Thank you so, so much for both walking us through the whole exhibition and making us feel like we were in Japan. Some of us may be in Japan right now, but those of us who aren't, that was a real treat. Um, and just thank you as well to the Mori Art Museum for hosting us and for taking the time on this morning, um, early morning, really to join with us. Um, if you want to learn more about this exhibition, I do encourage you to visit the Mori Museum of Arts website. They do have a wonderful um, website and web page on the exhibition with more information. Um, and I also just want to encourage you to sign up for other upcoming programs um, at the newyorkmuseumofart.org. I just wanted to highlight for you today two series and a program that we have soon. One is Arts in the Garden, which is our concert series partnering with NJSO. And then we have a panel called Alt Art and uh, Incarceration on Tuesday, July 20th at 7 p.m. So please join us if you can. Um, do you have any final words, Toku, before I set you off on your day um, in Tokyo? Yeah, uh, yeah, I want all of, you, all of you to come to Japan once the border is open and once the, you know, like COVID-19 settled on. Looking forward to see all of you in Tokyo. Hopefully soon, yes. We're, we're all eager to travel and we'll make sure we reach out to you if, uh, if we do visit soon. It would be great to see the museum in person and please do the same if you come to New Jersey. Oh yes, <laughs> Well, I think we've answered all of the questions from our audience. And so I will just say one more time, thank you so much for having us take a visit virtually with you today. <laughs>